at what um, point did your life really change? When my life changed when uh, every Jew had to register. I mean, we were only registered. In Czechoslovakia, the Jewish community was administered by the Jewish community in capital letters who issued you birth certificates, death certificates, uh, who kept a registry of all Jewish inhabitants. On top of it, we all had to register with some German, all Jews had to, under the threat of concentration camps, had to register uh, where they lived, how old they were. Uh, so we all registered. Uh, and my life really changed when we were asked to gather at a certain date, I think it was November, I've made a note of it, of some very relevant dates, because getting on in years, the memory is not what it used to be. Uh, yes, in, de in December 41, or prior to December 41, we were asked and told that uh, we have to gather up at the Bono railway station. Uh, all we were allowed is one suitcase, and we had to be at a certain time, but that we are going to be dis transported into Shangri-La, a beautiful place uh, where we are going to be all amongst ourselves, and if we worked well, you know, life would be good. And this was your whole family? That was my whole family, yes. Uh, so uh, we were uh, asked to gather around and present ourselves at the railway station, uh, where we got loaded up uh, under, under the uh, supervision of SS and uh, Czech police and gendarmes. We were loaded up or directed into railway carriages. Uh, railway carriages were shut and we were transported off. So who were you with in the railway carriage? With my parents. How many people were in there? Uh, there was just me, my mother and my father. Oh, in the railway carriage. That was a normal railway carriage, you know, where you had six people to the compartment. Uh, a normal, normal railway like you would take here, third class railway carriage. And we were transported off to Theresienstadt, or Theresien. How long did that journey take? That did not take very long. I think it took maybe five hours. The Theresienstadt is near Prague. It's about a two hour bus ride from Prague. Uh, towards the German border and uh, Brno, where I come, is about two or three hour train journey to Prague. So it, it went straight through. Uh, well, that's when you really felt it, you know, when you had to leave home, leave everything behind, uh, and part company into the unknown. When you say part company, did you part company with friends you, who were not on the same transport. Uh, in some cases, relatives, uh, aunts, uncles, friends. But you were torn away from your roots, which uprooted uh, into the unknown. How did your parents cope with that? They much harder than me, uh, especially my father. Uh, when it was proved to him that <coughs> being a German of fear didn't help him. And again, the humiliation, you know, uh, a, a respected citizen of the town, employer of hundreds of people, you know, was treated in, in that way. Uh, so after about four or five hours, five hour journey, we arrived at the railway siding in Terezin. What was your first impression as you got off the train? 
The first impression was just a railway station. You didn't see when we were marched off because Terezin did not have an immediate railway station. I think the railway station was about half a mile away from town. We were marched off into Terezin. I mean, Terezin, Terezin, that was a garrison town. Uh, an old established garrison, garrison town with lots of barracks, military barracks. And what the Germans did is they uh, barricaded street exits uh, and had certain points into streets which were guarded uh, by Germans or by Czech, by the Czech gendarmes. Um, where you could just could not leave. So they marched us, they marched us into Terezin and we came on a big gathering Appellplatz, which was the, uh, what's an Appellplatz in English? The assembly. Point. Yes, an, assem an assembly square, uh, where we were counted and allocated accommodation. Now that's when we were, when they split the men and the women and the children. 